All right, so in this one, I'm just gonna go through uh, this paint filter and show you what all of the different you know sliders do and all that. So this is what it'll look like when you open it up. If you don't wanna see the gizmos and this empty that you have right here, you can just turn them off right there. I'm gonna leave them on for this. Um, and you just have to select the plane that's right here and look through the camera for all of the shader information to pop up. So I have two materials. This one's called paint all in one. And this one is it's just called paint filter and it's a more simplified version. Um, so I'll start with all in one and show you what it does. Basically, I call this all in one because if you open it up, it has an actual shader in there, the principled BSDF. So this will like react to light, stuff like that. Yeah, and so you can tab into this and if you can't get out, you either have to select one of these and press tab again, or there's this little arrow right here. So that's how you get in and out. So this is the overall strength. So you can see if we turn it down, it's effectively off, except for some bump information that you can see right there. That you just have to turn off with the bump strength strength right there. So I'll turn that all the way up. This can also be used as a mask if you plug a texture in, in here. And uh, I have this set up already to uh, use this empty right here. So you can see if we plug it in, like the directions say, if we plug this in to the mask right there, uh, you can control a clear spot with this empty. Yeah, if you move it around, you can see the clear spot in the center moves with it. And right now we have it set. So this is like how clear it gets. And this is set to 0.3, um, which is like the middle of the circle is set to the 0.3 strength. So if you set this to zero, it'll be as clear as it can possibly get in the center. And if you want to change the fall off, you can just turn this value up right here. So if you set this to something like 0.9, you'll see it has a very hard edge now right there. It's like clear right here and then immediately fuzzy. You can also um, scale this up like that. But I like to leave this um, down pretty low to keep it like a smooth transition. Yeah, and you can just remove that if you don't want to use it. And I'll turn these off because we're not going to really need to see any of that anymore. So resolution does what it says. When you have it low, stuff becomes, you know, fuzzier like that. And if you make it higher, it becomes a little clear like that. Um, noise strength is uh, all this like smearing right there. So right now it's at 50. If we set it to zero, it just kind of looks like a mosaic now and you, you, you can see all like the hard edges. So this is just making it a little more organic looking like that. Um, the W is just a seed that changes the, the pattern. It doesn't change the scale of anything. So if you wanted to um, animate this effect, you could just either animate this value or use a driver like frame like that. Um, and when you press the space bar, this will play now and it'll just constantly change the seed value. Basically, all of these options right here are the same options you'd get with a normal um, a noise texture. So the scale is just, you know, if you turn this up, this is just going to be more fine. It looks kind of more wet. And if you make it lower, the texture just gets bigger like that. Um, detail is, again, if you turn this lower, it'll start to look more smooth. And if you turn it up high, then it'll look more dry. And you can also uh, increase that effect with the roughness. So if you just turn these up all the way, you'll see it, it looks pretty, um, pretty dry like that. So distortion is going to make it more kind of like swirly. So if we turn that down, it's less swirly. If we turn it up, you'll see there's a lot of um, swirliness going on right there. And you'll see it's more apparent when you turn it down. Uh, when you turn that the detail, that is. Like that. And then the bump strength adds a little uh, bump mapping. So this is up all the way, so you can see there's like a texture. If you turn it down, um, it's just completely smooth now. And this is only going to work because we have a light in our scene right here. Um, and if we look out, this isn't really going to uh, work well because we're using the window texture coordinate. But if we plug in the UV right here, and just wait a second, um, you can see at different angles now this works better. You can actually see, um, you know, the bump ma map uh, reacting to light. If you want to change your image, you can just go in here 
uh, you click on this, hit tab to go into it, and then you can just upload your image right here by pressing that, by pressing this folder button. And if you choose a video, something like that, that pops up right here, you just have to put the frame number, how many frames are in your video. This one has 300. Um, and then when you press play, it should work fine. Um, and if this is stretched out at all, you just want to make sure that your resolution right here matches the resolution of your video or picture or whatever. So I know this one's square. I can just do 1080 for both of them, and this should work fine. It's not filling up our screen now, so you just have to move your camera. You just have to move your camera down so that it fills the screen like that. All right, so let's look at the other shader now. All right, so the only difference is that this one doesn't contain any uh, shader. If you go in here, there, there, there's no like principled BSDF or anything like that. We have this uh, affecting our image right here, which uses the same image. You can change it the same exact way I just showed you. Um, and then that's going into an emission shader. So this is like, it doesn't react to light at all. Um, there's no shading really, it's just completely flat. So I just figured I'd put this one here. Um, that way, if you, you know, import an image as a plane or something like that, you could come in here. This is if you have the images as planes add on, you can, uh, you know, go under image, images plane right there, select your image. So now we have our image right here and you can bring in that group. It's called paint filter right here. Bring in the texture coordinate. You're going to want to use the UV for this and then plug the vector into there and it should make it look like a painting once it loads. There you go. And that's why this one is good. You can just uh, kind of attach it to anything. You just have to put it between the texture coordinate and whatever you're trying to distort. All right, so that's it. Um, you know, if you downloaded this, thanks for that. And if you want to learn how I made this, you can watch a tutorial for it. Um, I'll have a link on Gumroad to that and also, also have a link in the YouTube description. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.